A very good afternoon to you. This is a Tech Guru where we look at all things technical. Today we're going to be doing a Windscribe VPN review, the free version. So we'll be looking at what you actually get. We'll be looking a bit about the functionality, some of the features of Windscribe itself, and also we'll be looking at the speed. By the end of this video, you'll have a better idea of what you get, the features, etc. So you can decide if it's something you can use to protect your personal data, browsing activity and more when using public or open Wi-Fi networks. Okay, so let's dive right into the detail now. Have you ever used public Wi-Fi networks or do you use them regularly? I know I do. And as a result of that, are you concerned about sort of compromising your personal data or browsing activity or more information? Concerned about malware? It's a concern that I share. Until a few months ago, I never really had the need to use a VPN or virtual private network. I've always had access to a trustworthy internet connection. But now I work several hours a week where I actually need to use an open Wi-Fi connection. So the inherent risk sort of associated with this, I want to do something that can sort of protect myself in terms of my data and if you like generally protect myself while I'm online. So I'm sure a lot of people share the same concerns. Today I'm going to actually share my experience of using Windscribe VPN after the few months of using it. So we'll talk about the review in a moment. I know that any VPN can't give full protection, but I wanted to ensure my personal details, browsing activity, etc. was kept private as, as much as possible. So that's why I chose Windscribe VPN. So I actually went about looking for a VPN which got good reviews online, one which seemed to be trustworthy and one which was easy to use. I'm not a massive consumer of data, so a free plan was something that I was looking for with the option to upgrade and Windscribe seemed to tick all the boxes. But firstly, let's look at the actual allowance you get with Windscribe VPN. Okay, on the free version, version, you actually get 10 gigabytes of data every month. So essentially this resets every 30 days. And this is a an allowance by confirmed email. So 10 gig per confirmed email. So, so basically, I when I'm actually working out and about, I use my laptop and I use my iPhone. And because I sort of have two email addresses up and running, I actually get sort of 20 gigabytes allowance a month. So that's more than enough of what I'm using. So that's a good generous amount of data. If you're not a massive consumer of data, that is. Okay, with the VPN, you obviously get access to different servers around the world. Some don't have many options, but with Winscribe VPN, what I found is you actually get um, unlimited connections to over 10 sort of countries so there's a good choice there and obviously if you want more access to different sort of countries you need to upgrade to the pro option but we're not going to talk about that today and also it comes up with the best location for you in terms of the server which to log on for so we find that really useful so regarding some other features that you get with Winscribe VPN you also get access to something called Robert as you can see on screen so basically that blocks IP and domains on the, your devices. So again, within your account tab, you're, you can actually see, as you can see here, what is actually blocked. So with the free package, you actually get malware blocking only. As I said, I don't use it a lot every month and sort of what I'm accessing. So that's more than adequate for me. There are options, as you can see below, like ads and trackers, social, etc. blockers there, but obviously that's with the pro paid version. So there are options there, but with regard to malware, you can actually, block that and there are custom rules so you can actually have up to three domains IP addresses or networks which you can actually block so that's quite useful there so if you're a light user that's a pretty good benefit there as well looking at some more of the features you've got no identifying logs so basically they don't they don't store any logs that can identify you so you can read more about that there that uses strongest encryption as well and then if you like there's more information to read sort of below that so you can have things like static IP addresses if that's important to you port forwarding split tunneling for example basically that's if you want sort of more professional use or a lot more usage there are upgradable features so that's something which you can obviously take advantage of there one thing I actually like about Winscribe is you actually get a firewall included as well so the fight the feature is pretty good so basically it blocks all connectivity outside of the your tunnel to prevent IP leaks. So what's great is that it actually disconnects all internet activity. 
if you're not connected to the Windscribe VPN network. So again, I find that sort of feature because it's sort of free, it's also really useful to me as well. So I'm pleased about that. And just a final look at the features, there are some actual desktop app features there, which you can see on screen now. As I said, I've spoke about the firewall. You could even turn your computer into a secure Wi-Fi router if your computer allows that, of course. And there's browser extend extension features as well. So on my phone, sort of got autopilot, so that identifies the best location for you, etc. And as you can see, there's quite a lot more features, but some quite a lot of those are actually paid. In terms of support, actually, of computers and devices, Windscribe has quite a large and wide range of devices which are covered, for example. So they cover things like Windows, Mac, Linux, and Ubuntu, as you can see on the screen now. They cover browsers such as Chrome, Firefox, Opera, mobiles, Android, iPhone, Windows Mobile. They even do Windscribe for your TV, so Amazon Fire TV, for example, NVIDIA Shield and Kodi. And it goes on, they basically um, offer the sort of the cover on routers, NAS devices, torrent clients, etc. So more information can be found here on the, if you like, the support section of the Windscribe website. So again, they've got a comprehensive range of devices and operating systems which their software can work on. So we found that pretty good. Okay, so the question that a lot of people ask when using a VPN, obviously you're connecting through different country servers or even your own country, is the speed which you'll get. I've been using it, as I said, for quite some time and I've been generally pretty pleased with the speed. I tended to find that the speed varied quite a bit. If I was connected to servers in Europe, for example, the speed was just a little bit lower than my original speed without the VPN. But when I connected further afield, for example, to like Hong Kong, the speed was quite significantly lower, although still usable. So what I've done is I've done some speed tests just before this video, just to give you an idea of some of the speeds which we've achieved, if you like, starting initially without the VPN and then looking at the VPN in a few or several different countries. So we're going to look at that now. Okay, so as you can see on screen, we connected to the internet without VPN initially, so the ping was pretty quick at 11. The download speed, megabytes per second, was just under 36 at 35.73, and the upload speed was 9.36. So if you look at the UK connecting through a VPN through a UK server, you can basically see that the download speed was still pretty quick. It was down from just under 36 megabytes per second to 33.37. And again, the upload speed was still pretty quick, just slightly down from 9.36 to 8.78 megabits per second. So we're going to look at a few other servers now further afield, just to give you an indication of the speed you can still achieve. Okay, so looking at the Canadian or the Canada East server, basically we got a download speed which was quite a bit lower than the one we got in the UK without a VPN. So 35.73 download speed in the UK without a VPN. And we we're achieving 20 or just under 23 megabits per second through the Canadian server. But interestingly, the upload speed was actually just down from 9.36 to 8.7 megabits per second. So still pretty good there. So we're going to look at another one now. Looking at the connection whilst connected to the French server, we've got a download speed of 24.48 megabits per second as opposed to 35.73 through the UK without a VPN. So that's quite significantly down, but still a, a fair speed. With regard to upload, that was just down a little from 9.36 megabits per second down to 8.77 megabits per second. So again, on the similar lines to the Canadian test. And lastly, we did a speed test further afield in Hong Kong, just to sort of, so obviously the distance, um, that was quite significantly down. So in the UK, as you can see, we got 35.73, but in Hong Kong through their server, we actually only achieved 11.26 megabits per second. Whereas up there, speed again was um, down a little as well, not quite so drastic, but down from 9.36, those baseline figures without the VPN in the UK, down to 7.13 using the Hong Kong server. So at the end of the day, I guess it depends what you actually want from your, if you like, VPN. If you just want some basic but good and reliable protection when using your devices out and about, using public Wi-Fi or open Wi-Fi networks, 
where you can protect your personal data, browsing activity, etc. And you don't need to access lots of servers around the world. For example, like myself, I just use a local server in the UK where the speed is more than adequate for me. And you don't want all the whistles and bells of the VPN, all its features, etc. And you're not a massive consumer of data. And bear in mind, you actually get 10 gigabytes of data per month free with the free Winscribe VPN version. So that is per confirmed email address. So like myself, I've got two devices, so I get 20 gig of data per month allowance, which, as I said earlier, I do basic usage or basic have basic requirements, so that's more than adequate for me. And I believe that's pretty good on actually the free plan. Then the free version of Winscribe VPN would work well for you. Obviously, you need to be realistic in, ter in terms of the data and in terms of its allowance that you'll actually acquire. But remember, there are options to upgrade in different areas also. But if you're looking for something in terms of a bit more depth, maybe you're looking to unblock geo-restricted content or you're looking for more complex sort of requirements like port forwarding, you need maybe access to more servers or more data, you need a static IP or have more complex DNS and IP level blocker requirements, for example, then maybe you would need to consider upgrading or even looking at another provider. So just really wanted to share that insight with you today with regard to Winscribe. If you've got any thoughts or comments, please leave them below and press the subscribe button to get further tech related videos like this one in future. And check out the links that are appearing on screen now to other useful videos that we have. But thanks for watching today our video on the Winscribe VPN review the free version. We'll see you next time.